welcome back. Today we're looking at unit three of our business negotiation class. Get my picture on here. There we go. You can see me now. And today we're going to focus on uh, strategy, strategy planning specifically, how to plan your strategy. Remember, at the beginning of this course, we talked about there's some things you need to pay attention to in your negotiation. The main thing being get ready beforehand. If you're not ready, then you're not going to win. If somebody is prepared well, they're ready beforehand, they're probably going to beat you. So last time we talked about setting those goals. Now we're going to talk about some strategy. Now I'm not going to give you any kind of secrets. I'm not going to tell you how uh, you, can, you can get some kind of uh, awesome strategy that you always win. And it depends on many, many variables. However, I think today's unit is interesting in that it's not really very complicated. There's only really a couple main factors that break into a couple smaller pieces, making for your strategy options very few. There's only, well, actually four, we're gonna find out strategies that we need to focus on. So let's go ahead and begin our class today. So we're gonna look at unit three, strategy planning. If you can uh, access the slides online, you can download them. And if you have any questions, yeah, just send me an email. And if you're one of my students, then you know, drop by my office or talk to my assistant if you have some issues that we can work out or the TA that's helping me with this class. Okay, let's just go ahead and jump right into the strategy then. This unit, we're going to look at uh, the clear goals, of course, which we kind of wrapped up in unit two. Those are going to help us to prepare our strategy and eventually our tactics. Now, when we talk about strategy, usually strategy is kind of that overall, overall arching idea. And tactics are how do you implement them? How do you do them? They're the actual actions. So today we're focusing on those strategies, bigger ideas, kind of the overall plans that you're taking, the directions. Tactics are the specifics, and we're gonna cover a lot of tactics a little bit later. There are four basic strategies in all negotiations. Now this is a little bit surprising actually that one would think, well there are many strategies you can choose from, many different ways, many different approaches. And that's true, but those are mostly tactics. How do you do something? Actually there's just four basic strategies in negotiation. And this makes it pretty easy to focus at the beginning when you're planning. These four strategies depend on basically two questions. Two questions. So let's go ahead. What are these two questions? Question number one, how important is the negotiation to yourself? And question number two, how important is it for you to make the other side happy and or what we mean is develop a relationship? So what we have here is very interesting. You would think that negotiation has many strategies. It's very complicated. No, basically just two. Two questions, four strategies, two questions. Here's the two questions. Always ask yourself before you begin a negotiation. Number one, how important is this outcome right now, this negotiation to you or to your company or to your team? And number two, how important is the long-term relationship with the person you're negotiating with, with the company you're negotiating with, with your opponent, with your counterpart? Two questions. Let's keep it simple. How important is this now to me? And how important is the relationship with the other side over the long term? These two questions are what we focus on in order to come up with one of four strategies. Let's go ahead and jump into a dialogue here so we can get an idea of how this works. So today we're going to have two dialogue practices. One is in a family, give you a kind of an idea of how these strategies work, and one is in a business. 
So follow along with me in your uh, textbook. So we have Fred and Jane again. So they're going to decide a strategy for buying a car. So Fred says, this weekend we should go ahead and buy the new car. Now everybody knows buying a car you have to have a negotiation, right? So let's talk about this. Jane says, you mean the one we saw at the Toyota car dealer? And Fred says, yes. I have the salesperson's business card here. His name is Bill, but the price is more than we can afford. So remember we talked about price in unit two and the price that the salesperson is asking for is more than Fred is willing to pay. Jane says, we should make an offer that is 20% below the list price. And Fred responds, I don't think Bill, the salesperson, will like that very much. He told me the price was the bottom line, the lowest price possible, right? Jane says, I don't care if he likes it. Every dollar we save on the car, we can use for buying gas. So Jane is very clear. She wants to stick to this price because she can transfer that money to buy something else of value. Fred says, an alternative is, we can buy my brother's car. He told me he's going to replace his car already. And Jane says, he just bought that car last year. He seems to change cars every year. Fred responds, he even gave me a quote already. Should I offer him 20% less? Now here's a little, a little bit funny, right? So Fred is saying, I have a, my brother selling his car. May we get his car because the Toyota car maybe is too expensive. It's over our price that we set the limit on. That was our goal. We, we don't want to go over that. And so Jane says, well, okay, let's think about something else. So everybody seems to be moving forward. And then uh, Fred says, well, should I ask for 20% from my brother, 20% discount from my brother? And of course, that's kind of funny, right? Would you ask your brother for a 20% discount? Maybe you would. But I think a lot of people think, well, that's kind of hard to do. Why is that hard to do? Well, he's your brother. You don't want to cause trouble. You don't want to cause bad feelings. So here we have the two questions, right? We're kind of ending up with the two questions. Right now we're facing the question of, well, how important is that relationship? And the other question, how important is it for you to get that price, right? Let's jump back here. Jane says, of course not. If we pressure him on price, he may not help us paint the house this summer. Ah, so we don't want to pressure your brother on price because he's already going to do us a favor. So we want to have a good relationship with him. Fred says, oh yeah. So we want to stay on his good side. We want to stay friends with him over a long term so we don't want to pressure him. And Jane agrees with that, right. So even though they don't speak about it, they don't talk about it openly, they've basically looked at these two questions. How important is this negotiation now? And we found out that the Toyota dealer, that price is over Fred's goal. And Jane is very clear, you must get 20% and that's it, she's not gonna change. On the other hand, if it's bought from your brother, we buy the car from your brother, well, how important is that relationship? That relationship may be more important, so we may not have to ask for that 20% discount from there also. Now, of course, we don't know the price, we don't know the detail, it's just a general example. Relationships in negotiation can actually be very important to consider. So let's look at a business situation, a business context. And here we have a strategy planning meeting. So this is a meeting before negotiation. We're gonna to try to think of what is our strategy. So Fred says, now that we have our goals clear, we need to decide on which strategy to emphasize. Remember from unit number two, Fred was talking about the uh, goal package. So now that we have the goal package clear, we need to think about the strategy. And Bill says, isn't the strategy always the same? Make the most profit. That's what most people think, right? Just get the lowest you can, lowest price you can, the best deal you can. Fred says, that would be true 
if we want to compete with the other side or if they just accommodate our demands. I think this deal is very important for Zeno, so they won't just give us what we want. Now that's a bit of a long sentence, but what's it trying to say? Uh, Fred's trying to say, yeah, right, it's easy to say, just get what you want, right? Just get what you want, that's the strategy. But the problem with that is the other side wants something too. Unless they're just going to give us what we want, unless they're just going to compromise on everything, uh, that strategy is not going to really work too good. So you can, you can say that, I'm just going to get the lowest. But what is the lowest and what does it mean to you? And then it's very complicated. So that's overly simplistic. And uh, Fred says so. Bill says, is there an acceptable alternative? Can we do something else that'll work out? And Fred responds, well, if Zeno Company feels we are making more profit while they are losing money, they may avoid negotiating with us. Remember what we said at the beginning of this class, and that is to have a negotiation, you really need to have two things. One is something in common. That means something you're working together. In this case, if we're buying from Zeno, Zeno wants to sell, we want to buy, we want to sell their product in the market, we want to make a profit, they want to make a profit. It's something in common. You have to have some, something different also. So that's number two. Number one, something in common. Number two, something different. But if that difference is too big, then Zeno will just walk away. They'll say it's not worth it. So how do we include them, keep them interested in the negotiation? Not so easy. And Bill says, you mean they will withdraw, withdraw, just drop out of the negotiation? And Fred says, that is one strategy. On the other hand, if they think they can beat us trying to get the best price, they will compete. So of course we want to keep them in the negotiation. Isn't that good? Bill says and Fred responds, competing can make it hard to cooperate in the future. That's that relationship thing. We will oppose everything they want and they will oppose everything we want. Even if we win, Zeno may be very angry over the negotiation. So here we're talking about the relationship. Bill says, maybe we don't need Zeno in the future. And Fred responds, if we have a good alternative, you could be right. Right now, however, Zeno is the best supplier we have. So now we're asking, how important is this right now? How important is this Zeno company to us right now? Well, if we have other suppliers, like five suppliers, and Zeno is just one supplier, we can go ask the other five suppliers for a better price. So if we have some other supplier with a better price, well then, we don't need to worry about Zeno being angry at us. We don't care. So we don't need to worry about the relationship. However, if Zeno has something special, like special quality, a special production technique, where they can produce in a very short time, where they give us some kind of special offer, a special opportunity, or they have a product we just cannot buy anywhere else, then maybe we really need Zeno over the long term. And in that case, the relationship is much more important. So let's jump back here. So we need to collaborate with them, Bill says. And Fred says, right. We need to make sure everything we do and say in the negotiation, our tactics, help support the strategy of collaboration. So right here, we see that uh, Bill and Fred have chosen a very clear strategy. What is their strategy? Collaboration. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Bill says, this way both sides will find the deal acceptable. Okay, so now we kind of got an idea how this works, right? Uh, we talked about the family, going to buy a car. How do we buy a car? Well, we make our goal package, we set that, we go to the, the dealer, Toyota dealer, and what do we find out? Well, that price is over our goal package limit, or we can buy from a brother, but what's the deal on the brother? You might pay more, but you'll have a long-term relationship you want to take care of. So 
These are the two things we need to balance. Let's go ahead and look at the vocabulary very quickly. Again, the vocabulary is not very hard, but I want you to get used to using these commonly used negotiation words. So, acceptable. Acceptable means it's okay, it's just enough, it's good enough, I accept it. Nothing special, but it's acceptable. Accommodate means you give something so that you can get something. So I agree to something, maybe a small part, I can accommodate your needs. I can give you what you want on one piece and then we can come to an agreement. Alternative, meaning you have other options. You can choose other suppliers or you can choose other buyers or other products. So what are our alternatives? What are the alternatives? Avoid, meaning you don't want to do something. And in negotiation, this means you're usually trying to avoid a topic or avoid an issue or even avoiding a customer or a supplier. We need to avoid this company. We need to avoid them. We need to avoid this negotiation, possibly. Collaborate, meaning working together. Now, we're going to see in a moment exactly what that entails in strategy, but it means that we do some things together, not necessarily uh, half and half. That's not what that means. Collaborate just means we are trying to work together to reach a goal, which in this case would be a conclusion to the negotiation. Compete. Competing meaning I try to get something and you try to get something and if I get something you lose and if you get something I lose that something. I mean a good example for this would be basketball. So if you're playing basketball and you have two teams, if one team gets two points, they get one basket, they get two points, that's exactly the same as the other side losing two points, right? I mean you cannot get two points and the other side is happy that you got two points because you're getting two points is exactly the same as them losing two points. Now if they get two points, that's the same as you losing two points. It takes away from the other side. So anything that one side gains, the other side loses. That's compete or competition strategy in negotiation. We're gonna learn more about that in a moment. Emphasize. Something that's important, I want to emphasize that the shipping date cannot be later than October 10th, something like this. The list price, that's the price that is listed for the product, maybe listed on the website, listed on the product. It can also include things like the manufacturer's uh, retail, suggested retail price. This is something the manufacturers put on there, say this is what the price should be. Lots of times we think of the list price as the sticker price and we're not really happy to pay that. We would like to pay less than that. Of course, it depends on the situation, but very often we say, I want to get less than, I want to get under the list price. Oppose. Oppose meaning you work against someone or you refuse somebody's offer. Or you refuse somebody's ideas in the negotiation. I oppose you, I oppose this. A quote, a quote is a price. So give me a quote. Can you give me a better quote? Can you give me another quote? Is that all you can give me in this quote? So the quote is the price. Often it's not just the price, but it can include things related to the price, the whole package. But we often think of a quote as at least having the price. Strategy, of course, is then your plan. This is your plan on how you're going to win your strategy, your negotiation. So your strategy is your plan how you're going to win. What does win mean? Well, we're not too clear on that yet. We'll cover that a little bit more later, but to get what you want or to get what you think you want inside your uh, package, inside your negotiation package. So inside your goal package. So if you get the things in your goal package, you win. So your strategy is to get your goal package. Now, is your goal package a good goal package? I don't know. That's a different situation. It's very, very subjective. Tactics are the behaviors, how you do it. What do you say? How do you act? What's your body language? What are the words you say in order to you know, actually execute your strategy? Okay, so uh, those are some good vocabulary words very, very often used. Now let's look at our follow-up here. 
And for the follow-up, we're just going to kind of discuss a little bit more of what this all means. So a strategy guides your negotiation overall. So you need a strategy before you begin your negotiation. It's especially important if you have a team, more than one person, two people, three people, you need to be working together. How do you all work in the same direction? You must beforehand plan your strategy. If you don't plan your strategy, you'll be doing things in a different direction. You also need your strategy so you know what to say, how to act, what time to show up, how to use your body language, what information to offer. Those are all related to tactics. So let's go back here for a second, look at this slide. There are four basic strategies. Competition, accommodation, avoidance, collaboration. Now, there's an easy way to remember that. Strategies lead to tactics as this picture here shows. We have a strategy and that helps us decide how do we act, how do we behave, what are the things we do that the other side sees. How can we remember these four strategies though? Let me jump over here and show you. This is not, not hard at all. I get my slides working. The way you think of the four strategies is this. Ask these two questions. Question one, how important is the negotiation outcome to you? This negotiation right now. How important is this negotiation right now to you? That's the number one question you need to ask. The number two question you need to ask is, how important is the relationship over time? Okay, so let's jump back to the slide here. Take a look at this. Think of the first question as being one axis. How important is the outcome to you right now? This negotiation. This negotiation right now, how important is it? Not important, very important. Okay, not important. Very important. How about the relationship? How important is the relationship? Think of the relationship as being another axis. Not important, very important. Not important, very important. Okay, now then, let's take these two axes and put them together to really get a very simplistic view of how we decide our strategy. If we look at these two axes, we can see how important is the relationship to you? How important is the outcome to you? High, low on both. High, low on both. So now then, let's just go ahead and make quadrants inside of there. Let me show you the first quadrant. Accommodation. Accommodation is a strategy for negotiation. What does accommodation mean? Accommodation means you give what the other side wants. Not necessarily 100%, but what they need, you give to them. If they need a lower price, you give them a lower price. If they need uh, faster shipping, you give them sh faster shipping. If they need uh, a higher quality, you give them higher quality. Now, if we look inside the quadrant here, accommodation means how important is the relationship? Very important. How important is the outcome? Not important. So why do we choose accommodation? Because I need the other side to have a good relationship with me over a long time. I need the other side over a long time to have a good relationship with me. Right now, this deal is not so important. So right now, this deal, if it gives me something not so good, well, that's okay, I'll survive, my company will do okay, but I need this other partner, I need my uh, negotiation counterpart to have a good relationship with me in the future. Therefore, we use accommodation. Let's look at another strategy. The next strategy, opposite of accommodation, would be competition. Competition. 
So accommodation was up here, competition's down here. So competition means what? Competition means you fight for everything. You want to win those two points in the basketball game no matter what. Uh, you need to get those two and stop the other side from getting their two points. So everything I get, the other side loses. And everything I lose, the other side gains. So I want to win more, gain more, and lose less. That way I can win on everything. So why do I choose competition? Because the relationship for the future is not important to me. So if I give the other side pressure and I say, I need a lower price, I need higher quality, I give them a lot of pressure and they get very angry, they get very frustrated and they don't like me, they don't like my company, they don't like this deal, I don't care. Because over time, I don't need that relationship. Maybe my company's bigger than them, maybe my company is an important buyer and they are just a supplier and I have many other suppliers I can choose from. Or maybe they're an important supplier and but I don't need their product today, I can get another kind of product. Maybe they're not successful these, with their recent product. It could be any kind of thing like this. I just don't need them in the future. I don't think I need them. But right now, it's very important that I have a good deal. Maybe my company needs that money. Maybe we need a good profit margin on this deal. Maybe I'm gonna lose my job if I don't make a good deal. My boss has told me, hey, Warden, if you don't make a good deal this time, you're fired. And so I feel I must get a good deal. And so I don't care what happens in the future. I just care to keep my job now. So that could be on an individual level, on a company level, competition strategy. Okay, let's take a look at another strategy on the other uh, dimension here. Let's take a look over here and what do we have? Avoidance. Avoidance. What does avoidance mean? Well, you can see in the slide avoidance is relationship not important and outcome not important. So what does this tell us? I don't need this company over a long period of time in the future, not important to me. And right now, today, this deal, is this important? No, we don't really need this deal now. So in this case, I use the avoidance strategy, which means that when I negotiate, I'm very easy to say, well, you know what? I withdraw. Uh, we don't want to negotiate anymore. Uh, we don't need this deal. Uh, we're just going to walk away. So the other side always is worried I can just give up. That's my strategy, avoidance. I don't really want to negotiate. If you don't like my price, well, okay, I don't sell to you then. If you don't like this, okay, never mind, go somewhere else. I don't need you in the future and I don't need this deal today. So that's the avoidance strategy. Okay, let's look at our final strategy. Our final strategy is collaboration collaboration. Now collaboration means that we try to work together. Now, it's not exactly the same as cooperation. Similar but a little bit different meaning. But anyway the point is we're doing things together. We're trying to work together. Collaboration. How does this answer the two questions? Do I need this relationship in the future? Yes, very important. Do I need this deal now? Yes, very important. I need a good deal now it's very important to me and I need to have a good relationship with my counterpart, the other company in the future. So what do I do? I collaborate. What does that mean? I give some things, I ask for some things, I try to get them to give me what I want and I try to give them what they want. Hopefully, by giving them what they want and they give me what I want, we can both get what we want and that would be collaboration. Okay, let's put these all together here. So here we have our four strategies and our two questions. I think this is really quite amazing and it's something you need to really keep in mind because it's not as complicated as one would think. What we're looking at are two basic questions and four fundamental strategies. How important is the relationship? How important is this outcome right now? Accommodation, competition, avoidance, collaboration. Okay, now, that seems 
pretty straightforward and pretty easy, I think. Not complicated. That's really a great insight. If you can keep this in your mind as you prepare for your negotiation, this will be super helpful to you. However, just because there's four strategies doesn't mean negotiating now has become easy. The reason it's not easy, we can think about very quickly. If I want to collaborate, but you want to compete, how can we negotiate? In other words, I want to keep a good relationship with you, and I want to have a good outcome now. But you, you don't care about the relationship, and you only want a good outcome now. So our two strategies are fundamentally different. Of course, if your strategy was collaboration and my strategy was collaboration, probably we'll have a much easier negotiation. We both want the same thing. We can try to find out where can I give you something, where can you give me something. However, the problem is very, very often the two sides have different strategies. They have different answers to these two questions. And by having different answers to these two questions, their approach is going to be very different. And when you put those different strategies together in negotiation, that's where the negotiation gets tough, gets hard, not easy to come to an end, to a conclusion. And lots of times it means somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. Okay, we have some exercises in the textbook, specifically some fill in the gap. It's not hard. It's not meant to be hard. These exercises are actually meant to be easy. The reason I give them to you is I want you to begin thinking in this way, right? What are the two questions? What are the strategies? What are the, th the words that I can use in a regular negotiation? Because when we execute our negotiations in our virtual space, I want you to be using that as much as possible, thinking like a business person, thinking with his vocabulary, and I hope using English. Okay, so please take a look at that exercise A there. Okay, so I think we're going to wrap it up here. Pretty straightforward, right? Can I ask you how many strategies are there? Can I ask you what are the two most important questions to form your strategy? I think I can do that and you can answer quickly. When we negotiate, before you enter the negotiation, before you see the other side, ask these two questions, right? How important is the outcome to me now, to my company, to my team? And how important is the relationship with the other side over time into the future, right? And then choose one of your four strategies. Okay, so see you next time for negotiation. Good luck in your negotiations.